Good evening. It's a beautiful Sunday evening. Been a great day. Sitting here playing with the little stick horse. We ha I used it during VBS. We had a Wild West VBS theme. And I had two of them actually. This one and the other one I got propped on the couch over. And the whole time I was using it during VBS, I thought, man, it would just be good if it made noise. You know, I'm not always an observant person. I didn't really read the card or tag and stuff on it before I took it off. But Brent was messing with it the other day and points out to me that it did make noise. I said, no, uh He said, yeah, right behind the right ear is the button. I said, no, uh He showed it to me. I was like, are you kidding me? I would have loved to have known that during VBS. I'd have been playing my horses with a button. I'd have pushed the button. The kids would have got a kick out of it. One of them even asked me if it made noise, and I was like, no. I never paid attention to the tag. I'm sure it said it on it. Did not pay attention. Did not investigate it. Didn't really pay a whole lot of attention to what it looked like or what it was doing. Because if I had just paid a little more attention, I would have felt the hard little piece in there that makes the noise. I was like, really? I guess that's what I get for not looking it over. They both make noise. Mm. Or no better. Or known it would make noise. They all make noise now, just about. But I didn't pay attention to what I was doing. Didn't take time to look through it and investigate it and check check it out. I know I'm talking about a stick puppy, but that also goes with life. Today our pastor was talking about making right choices and choosing the right destination and the right path to go. He was using Matthew where it says, wide is the gate and the path that leads to destruction and many be find it. Narrow is the path that leads to righteousness and few be there that find it. And he was talking about how Going with the crowd can get you in trouble, can lead to destruction. But following the Lord is the right path to always choose. And while he was talking, it just kept me thinking. Kept, I kept, <laughs> at one point he used the example of I-40 and then little highway. You know, if you're going to a location and you want to use Interstate 40 or 65, or, you know, three and four and five lanes wide, or the little country path about two lanes wide. Which one is going to get there uh, quicker? Who can travel more? And who's making that description? I could just, in my mind, see this big wide path where everybody's doing it. You know, hurry, 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 let's go, let's go over here, let's do this, let's do that. And we don't ever stop and say, should I? Stop and take time to say, let me think about this. Let me figure this out. I get home and I see this little horse head and remember that it did make noise. And how I didn't take time to figure it out. And I was like, wow. How many times in my life, how many times every day have I just got in a hurry to do something and never stopped and asked myself if I should? If I said something, should I really have said that? And the challenge is, is watching what we say because out of our mouth comes blessings and cursings. We can bless our life, but we can also curse our life. 
I've encouraged people before to see things, the cup more half full instead of half empty. It's about perspective. But in the end, what we say matters. And how we say it matters. We could tell somebody, you did a great job. And be sincere. And it make them feel good. But we can also say, great job. In a sarcastic tone and make them feel bad. Same words, but the tone of the words makes a difference. The pastor was talking about the wide road. I think about all the things that you could find. I've been thinking about all my kids, the, the different things that we teach our children. And I look around at, at kids, well, the adults now having children that I've known since they were little bitty. And you see how they've turned out. Either strong or and courageous and brave and hardworking. And, or whether or not they expect somebody to give them something. Expect the world to hand it to them on a silver platter, as they say. I think that what they turn out to be is what we set the example for. And I got to thinking about how many of us are on that wide road. Oh, we all think the interstate's so much better because it's quicker and it's faster and it's this and it's that. But the little country road takes us through neighborhoods to meet new people, to see treasures that you may not ever knew existed. A few years back, I went to a conference, and it was off the beaten path, as they say. It was in a small community, and back off in the, one of these little country roads. And we stopped and ate at this. Didn't really look like much of anything, but it was a little restaurant in a little almost convenience store kind of set up. Kind of one of those everything in one kind of places. And on the front porch it had the neatest little bench. And I come home and I was telling my husband, I said, oh, I want you to build me one of these benches. It's got a cup holder and it's got this and it's got that. But it was just this little treasure in the spec middle of nowhere. Now, big major interstate probably wouldn't have existed. Because it's not a name brand major food outlet. It was what we call a mom and pop shop. Located in the middle of nowhere. It has some really good food too. But it had some things in there, little knickknacks and stuff that was handmade and were so unique. And it was like, wow, this little treasure in the middle of nowhere. When we get to following the world, we lose out on God's mm -hmm. little treasures. Those little things that He gives us. When we slow down and we get on the straight path, we see and we're privileged to see and sit down and eat in God's house, in God's little treasures. In that little speck in the middle of nowhere, we find a peace and relaxation because we're on the path with the Lord and not in the hustle and bustle of this is what everybody else is doing, you should too. Because sometimes going with a crowd or going with the flow of traffic, it leads nowhere. Or worse, it leads to a major pile up. Sometimes slowing down and taking the little road that's less traveled makes all the difference. One of my favorite poems, we studied it in high school. It's called Two Roads. 
I don't really remember it all still today, but some about two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent to the undergrowth. And having taken the other just as far. But it, it was in need of wear or something like that. The end it talks about saving the other for another day, but knowing how way leads into way, I should doubt I should ever come back. Two roads diverged in the yellow woods and I took the one less traveled uh, by and it's made all the difference. I think it was Ralph Rondo Emerson or something like that. One of those famous ports. I use that many times in teaching. We can't always travel. We can't travel both of them. We have to choose. Be observant and figure out what it is God is calling us to do. And we can even find the right button to make the noise. That makes all the difference. Instead of tearing each other down, we build each other up. That's the road that's traveled by. It's choosing to believe in someone. God bless.